Today is Internet Safety Day, and the Toronto Police Service would like to remind everyone, parents and children, of the need to be vigilant online for those who may want to take advantage of our vulnerable youth. The Toronto Police Service has been working with the Canadian Centre for Child Protection over the last year to develop and distribute educational material on the issue of self-peer exploitation, also known as sexting. A resource guide has been developed for schools, families and police officers to help with this complicated and difficult area of concern. Over the last year, this type of occurrence has increased significantly and we find the best way to battle its surge is through education. The impact that sexting has on our youth is self-evident. They are affected emotionally, socially and sometimes criminally and we need to all work together to curb the rising numbers of these instances. The internet is a wonderful means of communication and we all use it. We all need to stay linked to one another. However, it is also a playground for those who seek to do harm to others. On this day, where the emphasis is on safety on the internet, we need to look at how we communicate with our children. Do we know what they are doing on the internet? Who are they talking to? And are they taking pictures of themselves? Opening up conversation with our kids about the internet and the consequences of posting photographs of one another is critical to saving them a lifetime of embarrassment or harassment or even criminal charges. But most importantly, they are victimizing themselves. Our hope is that we can continue to work together to combat this problem. Any questions? Just to explain, Michelle, the, the most common type of dangers, I guess, that lurk out there for you, youthful people using the internet or texting. The dangers out there are just like in the real world, where they're strangers, and we try to teach our children uh, not to talk to strangers, but it's also there in the cyber world, and I don't think uh, um, the youth are aware of that. Wh who they think they're talking to another 13-year-old with the same interests and whatnot, it could be a 40-year-old man. And they just don't understand uh, the ramifications of that. They can be lured into doing things, they can be talked into performing different acts, and it, it becomes very scary. And what happens is that the youths find themselves in a position where they feel like they're trapped and they have nobody to tell or nowhere to go. And at least working with the, uh, the Canadian Centre for Child Protection, uh, they have a vast number of resources uh, to offer children, parents, as well as teachers, and how to rectify the problem and as, uh, actually tell them and teach them not to do it. Let's say a child has been victimized by someone like this and they feel terrible and they don't know what to do. What's the way back? What's the treatment? There's actually, there's a number of ways of, of doing it. One thing that we advise them to do is talk to their parents, tell their parents, and get the parents involved. Uh, one reason that teenagers don't like to tell their parents is because they, over, they tend to overreact. They're, they care about their children. Uh, but if they keep those lines of communication open, um, that's a great place to start. If they don't have that, call us. Call the Child Exploitation Unit. Call the Toronto Police, the helpline. Uh, we'll be more than willing to help you and, and find a way to, you know, there's, there's a vast number of resources. And there's also the, um, the Canadian Centre for Child Protection is online and they have a number of resources they can get, have the children be in touch with. So what would your one-on-one -on -one advice be to a 10-year-old or a 13-year-old who uh, may find themselves somebody trying to groom them online or what, what do they look for and what's your advice? The one thing that we find, uh, if, if they're as young as 10 years old or 13 years old, what we try to tell children, if you don't know the actual person, try to refrain from talking to them. Like I know chat lines are you know, the way to go and they're, they're fun, they can find friends and they're not judged, that's the whole allure of the internet. But don't give out any personal information give out as little as possible. Don't tell them where you live or where you go to school or 
your passwords, things like that that are, people are able to hack into. Don't talk to the basics. Don't talk to strangers. Exactly. It's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's just that this is the cyber world. Taught me. Exactly. And I was taught myself. About the information you just told us, where we can find it except the website? We can find it in the school? Uh, there, the website is uh, on, you can locate it on the Canadian Centre for Child Protection. They have a website and, it's, and it will direct you step by step resources for parents, for teachers, for children. And they'll give you step by step instructions on the help that you can receive and for the parents as well, the education that some things that, you know, that they need to be aware of what their children are doing. Just uh, Michelle, describe the scope of the problem. How, how huge is it? How concerning is it to the police? It's grown to epic proportions. Uh, we find that the number of reports that come in are increasing. And also, we have a very good contact with the Toronto District School Board as well as the Catholic School Board. And we find that it's taking up a lot of their time as well when they try to deal with situations such as this. And it just, it just grows that way. We don't hear too much about it um, because a lot of the times it is youths that are involved, so their names are you know, released on press releases or anything like that, but it's happening. And it happens on a daily basis, we find. That also suggests the number of predators out there is growing exponentially as well. I think the number of predators are the same but I think what happens is that our um, youth uh, have become more, they become more daring when they're on the internet because they're not seen and they're not judged. So people say things that they're, they're too shy to say in person. So that's why it gets to, to grow even more. And uh, children just become more daring and that's right. Any other questions? Thank you very much, Michelle. Okay, thank you.